lot to talk about on this Friday evening. I'm joined now by NBC News political analyst and host of the Hugh Hewitt Show on Salem Radio Networks. Hugh Hewitt. Hugh, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, Kristen. So some are looking at this. They think it looks like a presto change by Donald Trump. Here's the question, though. Are voters going to buy this, Hugh? I think many of them are, and by buy it, I think they're going to recalibrate the pluses and minuses of both candidates. You can run as long a series of miscues and pratfalls for Hillary Clinton as you did with Donald Trump. His are more famous because they are easier to document. But one of the reasons that we saw Manafort exit today is so that Donald Trump, under the tutelage of, I think, Kellyanne Conway, who is rapidly becoming, you know, the Carville, the Axelrod, the robe of this cycle, can get him to focus on on the very unseemly and quite scandalous Clinton Foundation spreading wreck of a, of a mm -hmm. indictment of Hillary Clinton. Forget the server, let's go to the foundation. And so I think what you see clearing away here in August is the beginning of the comeback and the story for September will be uh, that Donald Trump is closing a gap that is real, but that he's closing it under the guidance of Kellyanne Conway and with a new rhetoric. And I think you're gonna hear the names Mark Rich, Gilbert Shiguri, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, about a thousand times, because that is the unseemliest part of the, of the Clinton story. So a month from now, Kristen, the Olympics won't be in the way of the narrative, and we will be focused on what did she sell and when did she sell it? How much access was for sale at the State Department under Hillary Clinton? Well, and I know, and a lot of Republicans want Donald Trump to be focused on that. And I take your point about Hillary Clinton having miscues as well. The difference, it seems to me, is that he has offended groups of people. And as he has said, as he said last night, one of the things that he regrets is are the people who he's actually made to feel bad. So is it too late, Hugh, to turn this around? No, I don't think so. I think that the Supreme Court hangs in the balance, and I think a lot of people are beginning mm -hmm. to focus on their, their First Amendment, their Second Amendment, their Tenth Amendment rights, the very structure of federalism being impacted by the Supreme Court. I think Donald Trump's economic speech, and his speech last night directed at African-American communities in specifics in terms that people haven't talked to the African-American community for in a long time about what they've been promised by Democrats and what has never been delivered is exactly the kind of change that has to happen. And so what, what Donald Trump took a long time to do is leave primary control yeah. and move to general election mode. But it's there's a lot of time left because, thank goodness, these Olympics have been, for a Republican, these Olympics have been tremendous, highly rated. I can't wait to, wait to watch more of them tonight. And they've obscured a lot of the, the elbows being flown inside of Trump Tower. When they're done, and they'll be done next week, That's all eyes sure. are going to go to the campaign. I, they're and, all going to go I, to the campaign. I want to get to your point about African-American voters in one second. It's, it's a good one. Let me just ask you one point. We're about to talk to GOP consultant Mike Murphy, who said this. Could Trump change? Maybe, but he's Trump. My Labrador could walk up to the piano and start playing. Not going to bet on it. Trump is Trump. Uh, that's what he said on Morning Joe on Wednesday. We have seen Donald Trump, in fact, pivot. Do you think this is a real pivot, or do you agree with Mike Murphy that it might go away in another week or so? Well, I hesitate to disagree with Mike Murphy because he's one <laughs> of the smartest guys in politics. He's also funnier than I am by a lot, and I and I'm and he's going after me. So you always got to be careful about the guys coming on after you. But I do believe he can change. And, and look, I've, I've got my own Trump tattoos. I got three or four of them, right? I, I, I've been I've done to the dance with Donald a couple of times, but I don't care about that. I care about where the country's going. I care about the Supreme Court, and I think a lot of Americans are worried about the fact that in the hostage ransom that was just delivered to Iran by this Obama-Clinton administration, it appears that Russia got basing rights thrown into the deal. I'm concerned about a Syrian civil war that's killed a half million people about Hugh, a refugee me, me, wave. Yeah, and, and, okay, two very quick ones. You raise the point that Donald Trump has gone after you as well. But do you think other Republicans are going to be able to put their grievances aside and get on board and that you're going to start to see the type of party unity that has so far been lacking? Yes, and I'll give you a perfect example. Brad Thor was a never-Trumper. He's one of America's best-selling authors, a tremendous presence in conservatism on Twitter, and, and just a very well-respected conservative Second Amendment guy. Brad Thor changed from never-Trump to pro-Trump just this week. There are going to be a lot more people like that. Now, I don't expect the dead-enders in the never-Trump movement to change. They are heavily mm -hmm. invested in never-Trump. But I do think that the more people focus on, and I, I wrote a column about this, a dozen different areas of the law that will change as soon as Hillary Clinton puts 
one hard left liberal on the Supreme Court and change overnight, that they're going to come around and the worse the world gets, the more Trump is going to be able to make the case that why would you reward Secretary Clinton after she blew Egypt, Libya, Syria, the Supreme Court, the server, the status of force agreement, the worst of the, maybe the worst secretary of state we've had in American modern political history. Why would we turn to her? That's Trump's argument. And that's Kellyanne, Kellyanne Conway's task. Well, and, and, and let me, before I let you go, I think one of the most interesting shifts we've seen is this more robust outreach to African-American voters. Uh, let me play you what Donald Trump just had to say, and then let's discuss it on the other side. What the hell do you have to lose? And at the end of four years, I guarantee you, that I will get over 95% of the African-American vote, I promise you. Hugh, what the hell do you have to lose? Is that the best case he can make to African-American voters? Right now, he's trailing with that group 95 to 1% based on one of our recent polls. It's the first step you have to make in making the argument is, hey, folks, what exactly did President Obama do for you or President Clinton do for you? Have your economic change, uh, conditions changed in 16 years? Today, Donald Trump and Mike Pence were in Louisiana. President Obama is playing golf on, on Martha's Vineyard. 11 people are dead in Louisiana. If let there me, was even one you, tenth, let, We're going we're gonna to get to that, but really quickly, Hugh, he's making these arguments in communities that are majority uh, white. Does he not need to go into some of these predominant African-American communities, visit African-American churches, speak to African-Americans and improve his actual outreach, not just make well, well, I statements. Think, I think when you go into, I, I have to argue that, Kristen, when you go into the Milwaukee media market, you're talking to an African-American uh, heavily populated community. When you're in North Carolina, you're talking in, in a state with many media markets, which will be dominated by African-American voting turnout. But the city when itself was 94% white today, Hugh. The city itself was 94% white. Louisiana is a special case. Louisiana, that's where the flood is. But when he was in Youngstown, Ohio, which is my backyard, Mahoning County, he's in an African-American heavy district. And up there in Trumbull, Mahoning County, all along the Pennsylvania-Ohio border, heavily African-American uh, population. And Donald Trump needs to keep going back there, and he is. Hey, we're a lot better off than we were two weeks ago. We're a lot better off than we were a week ago, we being Republicans. I hope the trajectory continues, and I think with Kellyanne Conway, Mike Pence sitting on that plane with Donald Trump, it's going to continue to do so because he's got gifts. He just has to use them in a political way, not in a developer way. All right, Hugh Hewitt, great insight as always. Really appreciate your perspective. Thanks, Kristen.